So in today's video, we are talking about three N8N builds that pretty much every single person watching this video will be able to find value in. It certainly was not easy to be able to narrow this down to three things that literally I think most people watching this would find value in. And that's why I landed on Google Sheets, Google Drive, and Gmail just because it's so widely used. Now, just before we dive in, all of these blueprints are going to be 100% free down below in the description with tutorials breaking down exactly how to build them out. We're gonna be moving through this quite quickly. So if you find value in anything you and you wanna use it, they're gonna be there in the description for you to use. With that being said, let's get into this right now. The first one is a system that automatically literally runs your entire Gmail inbox. How freaking cool is that? Imagine waking up every single day, it's nice, organized, tidy, everything's in order, right? So this is exactly what an automation like this looks like. Now, if you're anything like me, you probably get like hundreds of emails. Most of them are completely unwanted in your inbox arriving every single day, especially those ones that are the e-commerce brands being like, happy birthday. Do you want to spend an extra hundred dollars on your birthday? Because I'm going to give you two cents off. Uh, and uh, yeah, essentially all of those, we can like do things like delete. So for example, in our particular workflow right here, what's going on is we're waiting for an email to come into Gmail, just like this particular email right here. And so as soon as that email comes in, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use ChatGPT over here to analyze it and determine which label we should actually put on it. So for instance, we could be like, hey, this is a promotional email or it's a social email, personal email, sales, recruitment, accounting, calendar, all of that kind of stuff. And that way we can keep our inbox nice and hygienic in all of the labels that we have created for ourselves over here. We can also see these right here as well. Cool. And then the best part is, is that not only can we label the emails coming in, but we can also act on those particular emails. So for instance, let's say we get those annoying promotional emails that you probably hate receiving all the time. Um, yeah, we can just go ahead. We can mark them as red. We can delete them, whatever the case may be. We can, we can act on them. Okay. The next thing that we can do is we can automatically generate responses and then reply to those people or create draft replies before we actually send it just to make sure we're happy with the response. So for instance, if we have an email coming in here, we could automatically draft a reply to that person and then send it off. The next thing that we could do here as well is we could like forward emails. And so this is particularly useful, for example, if you're doing something like um, accounting or bookkeeping. So I'll receive a lot of emails that contain invoices or PDFs or receipts or whatever. And I can automatically forward that into a software called Dext, which is like a bookkeeping software, which will then automatically extract the line items, put it into QuickBooks so that at the end of the year, I don't have to frantically organize all of my receipts for the past year. This is just a huge time saver. Something like that works really well as well. You could also forward all your receipts over to your bookkeeper or whatever the case may be. And then lastly, we can also create tasks for ourselves or our team members. So for instance, email comes in, we label it as maybe a school email and we need to automatically do something. We could create a task here for our team. We could even add that information into Google Sheets all of that kind of stuff. So this is a huge, huge game changer. At least for me, I use this every single day. I absolutely love it. And this is going to be down below for free if you guys want to use this as well. Now, the next workflow here that we're going to cover is all about Google Sheets. Now, the coolest part about this, and I've been using this for absolutely years, I think this is one of the biggest game changers as well, is you can like literally supercharge Google Sheets. You can turn it into your own custom web application. Like how freaking cool is that? And so you can have Google Sheets go to work for you. So this is my pretty much custom web application in Google Sheets, and I've given it additional functionality. So I have this pipeline here, status for all of my videos, okay? So anytime I'm like, organizing video content creation, all of that kind of stuff. I could be working on like 10, 15, 20, 30 videos at any given time, okay? Across all of my social media accounts. And so the issue is, is that that's obviously a lot of work and we need to stay super organized um, between myself and my team. And so we can have these statuses over here. Anytime I click a different status, it can automatically do things for me. So for instance, maybe I'm like, hey, this idea over here is really cool. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change this to scheduled, okay? automatically we could do things like generate um, Google Drive links over here. And then we could put in here like Google Docs and all of the media uploads so that we can stay nice and organized. Another thing that we could do is we could have it so that as soon as, uh, I don't know, like we set it to, I don't know, pending publish, which means our editors need to automatically go in and here and edit things. It can notify this particular Google 
this particular NADN workflow. And depending on the stage that I selected, so for instance, maybe it's like pending publish or whatever, these all have different stages over here because you can see all the filters that I'm going for for all those stages. And every single one of these filters is aligned with one of these particular pipeline stages. We can do whatever it is that we want. So for instance, I could automatically notify our team being like, hey, we have these two videos that need to be edited. Can we make sure we do all the deliverables for this? We could also add this to ClickUp and then make sure that not only are we notifying our team, but we also have a ClickUp project management file to make sure that no particular project or task gets swept under the rug. Can't tell you how big of a game changer this is, especially if you're working with a lot of different tasks at the same time. Obviously things can silently go missing inside Slack. It's nice to have a project management system to make sure that everything is on track. And so that's just one example. There's so many other things that you could do. Another one that I love is recruitment. So we are getting like with my last business, thousands of people inquiring for positions. And so the issue is, is obviously that's a lot to keep track of, but with all of these kind of check boxes, very similarly to how I have the project, um, pipeline in like one particular box where we can drop down, we can grab whatever status it is. Very similarly, we have the entire life cycle over here, just spread across columns. So people will come in, they'll be added to the sheet. The first thing they'll do is have to do onboarding questions and then we'll screen those onboarding questions. We'll test their skills, make sure that they're proficient at the job that they're looking to be hired for. If you're an, S like if you're an SEO expert, show me your SEO skills. If you're a content writer, show me your content writing skills, all that kind of stuff. Next. Thing is scheduling an interview and so on and so forth. And so why this is super powerful is because we can automatically receive people from Indeed. So let's say you post a job here and you get hundreds of people. We all like, it's a massive pain in the butt. If you have to all of a sudden message people through Indeed, you have to log in here every single day. It's just another platform in the mix and things can go uh, missing super, super easily, but we can automatically add people into this Google sheet. We can automatically do things like schedule interviews. We can automatically set off contracts and we hire people. It's just it, this kind of stuff makes your life so much easier. And these are just two amazing use cases that I've come across that I use like every single day. Sweden, so the last automation that I wanna cover in this particular video is this Google Drive automation here. This looks so much scarier than it actually is. I promise you, if you know like one of these lines right here, you're pretty much good to go. We're gonna walk through this. But in a nutshell, let's take Google Drive. If you're like me and you've had like a Google Drive for probably like 15 years, it's honestly a mess. It's just, it, it, it hurts my soul <laughs> to come in here and look at this mess because everything is freaking everywhere. And it gives me anxiety and I just wanna close my eyes and run away. Bottom line is, is that um, we can automatically organize this so that we have a Google Drive just like this where we're automatically organizing all the files into the right places. This is also important too because if you're like me and you come into like docs.google.com over here and you click create a blank spreadsheet because you're like, oh, I just want a shortcut to like being able to automatically generate a sheet, it, it will automatically be added into your Google Drive just in the general folder right here, which is a nightmare because then you might not be able to locate it later on. Same kind of deal with, uh, of course, Google Sheets, Google Docs as well, as well as Google Slides. And so these can get super disorganized super quickly. But if we wanna organize into something like this, this workflow will do that for us. And for whatever reason, Google Drive doesn't have this built in. Okay, so let's kind of go over this together. So we can essentially wait for files to be automatically added into Google Drive. Okay. So anytime you go in here and you click this plus button for Google Sheets, this will be added into your Google Drive account. And so how we organize this is we wait for that file to come in and then we have this if statement here. And you can think about this switch and if statement essentially as the exact same thing. Let me break this down. We need to identify what file type it is because the way that we process each file type is going to be different. So if we look at this Google Drive, we might have an audio file, we might have a Google Doc, we might have a Google Sheet in here, we might have, okay, that's a lot of Google, <laughs> Google Sheets in here. We might have videos, Google Sheets, PDF files, and so there's a lot of different 
different file types. And so we need to identify which one it is, okay? We might have Google Forms, we might have Google Drawings, we might have Google Sites. We can automatically categorize these and into folders for Google Forms, Google Drives, uh, all that kind of stuff. Then we also might have things like, for instance, PDF files, Google Slides, Google Sheets, Google Docs, all of that kind of stuff. What this enables us to do is automatically sort these as well as images, as well as audio files and video files. So let me kind of break this down. Let's say we have a PDF file coming in, Google Slide, Google Sheets, Google Docs. Automatically, we can download the file. And the most beautiful thing about this is that when we download it, we can download it into a PDF file over here, Google Slides, Google Sheets, Google Docs. They're all going to be transformed. So whether it's Sheets, Docs, or Slides, they're all transformed into PDF documents as well. So that's why we have this if statement, because we're essentially batch processing PDFs, Google Slides, Google Sheets, and Google Docs through one path here, okay? So we can download those files. And then we have an if statement just to make sure there's no errors, okay? If there is an error, what we can do is we can error handle this by taking it down to the error path. And then by the error path, we just essentially say, hey, we can't organize this automatically. So you're gonna have to manually do it. And then we just move it to the miscellaneous tab in our Google Sheet, and then we can change the name or whatever. But if it succeeds, which it does like the vast, vast, vast majority of times, what we can do is extract text from that PDF document. Then here's where the magic happens. We ask ChatGPT over here, hey, based on the information of that file, so let's say we have a file like this, like the top questions on my school calls, it will be able to come in here and actually view all of this information and be like, hmm, well, that looks like a, uh, a Google Sheet that belongs in the school folder. And so it will literally be able to identify this is a school um, file that belongs in the folder for school. And so we can automatically categorize this into my particular school folder right here, okay? And so that's essentially how this works. And then more or less, we just move it in that folder and we can also rename it as well. And if we want to, let's say you have mission critical um, documents in here and you don't want them to go missing by AI miscategorizing a couple, we can actually have a paper trail where we record every, sin every single interaction. We can see every single file and where it was moved so that we can go through these one by one and just to prove them, make sure that they ended up in the right spot. And so that in a nutshell is it. Those are the three automations that pretty much everyone can use. I specifically chose Google um, projects here just because out of all of the builds that I've made, like some are great great for business owners, some are great for people looking to sell AI automation services, some are good for people that are looking for jobs, some are good for people that work at a company, but these three, like literally anyone can use. I, I, like it transcends all of those different categories and, and that for that reason, I ended up picking these. So leave your thoughts in the comments down below guys on what you think about this. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And also if you're looking to take AI automation to the next level, I highly recommend taking a look at my school community here where we help you accomplish really three things. First of all, learn these tools like NADN, make.com, all of that kind of stuff. So you can be a master in these tools. Secondly, it's for those of you who are looking to actually automate your existing business. I give you the exact blueprints that I would, I use to automate up to 80% of my business and scale to seven figures. And then also for those of you looking to create your own AI automation agencies, I give you the exact roadmap that works for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully I get to see you inside. If not, thank you so much for watching my video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.